Hi and welcome to the video. In this video we're going to be looking at how to create YouTube cover art using Adobe Photoshop. Like some of the other tutorials I've done, there is a handy Photoshop file download in the first link of the description of this video. If you want a nice free file with all the sort of guides set out and all the rulers set out and all those safe zones like we've looked at in other videos, you can download this file for free so go check that one out. Okay without further ado, let's jump straight into the video. So to design a successful YouTube cover art, you need to follow a couple of rules. And the major rule for this is to keep all your essential information inside a central area here. Um, so if you've downloaded the file from the first link in the description, I've set out all these different safe zones for you. And you can see that the TV area, if it goes onto a TV, is this outer box. The desktop is this inner box here, so on a desktop computer. Next one is your tablet, which will be this width here, and then the minimum and the mobile for desktop is this here. Basically, just put all your essential information in this central box here. A good place to start for any photography, if you don't have any for your channel, is to look on Unsplash. Find something which is sort of suitable to the genre of your channel, and then download a image for free but remember to always credit the photographer i'm going to start with this image here i'm going to adjust where it sits in the frame so as i mentioned before you've got these safe zones here and this central safe zone is where i'm going to put all the essential information such as logos and text so i'm going to drag this image down and make it look appealing so let's get that image in nicely in place I don't want too much of the fire in. I want to be able to fit the logo in the middle or the text in the middle so it doesn't look strange and it's got some sort of background space for the logo or the text to have some breathing room. That's about as far down as I can go with this image. So let's see what it looks like with the logo over the top. So that's the logo over the top. It kind of doesn't pop from the background of this image. There's a couple of ways that we can help the logo, if it's in white, to pop off that background image. The first way we can do this is just add an overlay. So I click a new layer and go to Edit Fill. We're going to fill in a black colour. So click black and press OK. Now it's going to obviously fill the frame there with black. We're going to go to Opacity on the right hand side and we're going to put that down to 30. So as you can see, the logo now pops off the background and you can see some of this image in the background as well. Um, a little handy thing that you can do um, if you're using overlays, if you click on the overlay and on your keyboard, if you click on number one, it'll do the opacity to 10, two for 20, three for 30 and so on. So you can sort of test whereabouts that sort of sweet spot is for it popping off the background. It's somewhere between 10 and 30. About 25 might be a good indicator. So 25 opacity. So it kind of pops off the background, maybe a little bit less actually. 23. As you can see there, you've got the logo popping from the background. Another quick tip to get your logo to pop from the background would be to add a drop shadow to your logo. So Go into the layer panel and double click on your logo. I've already got one activated already. So we're gonna to go to the layer style panel, go down to drop shadow. And as you can see here, if I turn it off, off this here, it disappears into the background some more. Add that drop shadow on. I'm just gonna bring up the opacity as well to help it pop off that background. So when you're happy with it, just press OK. And you've got a nice logo popping off that background as well. So the next image we are going to use is this forest image here. So it looks okay positioned in the frame um, because it's sort of within the genre of outdoor and adventure, but it is a little bit too bright. So the first thing I'm gonna do, like the last um, thing we did, is add that overlay over the top as well. So again, to create an overlay, add a new layer, edit, fill, go to black, press okay, and then just hit three on your keyboard and it's added that overlay already. This is a little bit dark, but let's add the logo to it. And as you can see, that kind of pops off the background already. It's also got that drop shadow on there, so it is lifting it slightly as well. Another thing that you could do is add an additional overlay as well, um, using one of the colors from the background. To do this, 
you get rid of your overlay for a minute by just turning it on, we're going to sample the colour using the eyedropper. If you press I on your keyboard, you should get the eyedropper. We're going to sample one of these sort of green colours within the trees. You can see this over here on the left hand side in the sort of foreground colour. So I've just selected a green from one of the trees. I want it to be kind of dark, but not too dark. We don't want it to be do garishly green either. Let's just pick a nice green, which isn't too light or dark. So I think I've just got one there. So click new layer again, same process, edit, fill. We're gonna use foreground color, that's okay. And it's gonna fill the frame with that foreground color. I'm just gonna adjust the layers, put that over the top of our um, background image. So our logo is now present as well. And for this, we're gonna use one of these layer styles. I'm gonna use lighten. So I'll click on where it says normal next to the opacity and go down to lighten. And that's going to fill in some of the shadow areas from those trees. And then I'm also gonna bring down the opacity as well. So it's just adding a little bit of extra green to that background. So it's not so much contrast in it as well. We're gonna add that other overlay as well. So we've got two layers now of overlay. That's without the black overlay. And that's without the green overlay. It's quite subtle, the green. So I might bring that up to 40%. That's at 50%. So there we have our second background already ready. So it does work on the background. We've also got this central area here. Everything's all situated in that sort of safe zone box. So let's have a look at this third image here. So we've got a mountain range in the background here. Let's add the logo to the center. Uh, let's turn off that drop shadow for a moment. So we've got that white logo on that sort of greyish background. It does work and you could stop there and you could add that overlay again like we have done um, to make it pop from the background. We're gonna do something different with this one. Um, I want the mountain range to be on the left hand side. I'm gonna drag this over to the left. So we click on the background image and we use shift to keep it in place and drag it over to the left. So as you can see, we've got the other background image behind it. I'm just gonna switch all that off for the time being. So we've got this black background. So let's pull that over to the left there. Now we don't want this black background obviously. So I'm gonna duplicate this background um, image here. So I'm click on Alt on my keyboard and drag it across and have Shift at the same time. So it's gonna keep it exactly in line. Well, will let go and there's a little trick I'm gonna do here. So I'm gonna edit, transform, flip horizontally. I'm gonna drag that image all the way over until it meets almost like a mirror image of itself on the right hand side. As you can see, it's almost there, there we go. Still holding shift. When you've got that kind of pink line, it's got that mirror image of itself. It's kind of a bit of a trick. I'm just gonna turn my guides off so you can see. So it's got this sort of join here. Now, I don't mind that. Obviously, it's a fake image. But I don't mind that and it allows me to have a full image all the way across. Turn the guides back on so we've got our safe zone. Now I don't really like how the logo is positioned on centre there. It probably could do with going over to the right and it might disguise some of this sort of join here as well. So I've got logo set up on a layer for logo right. So that works for me. It's also got the drop shadow on so I can turn that off. That kind of works for me. I'm happy with that. I would export that and use that straight away. If you didn't want to use it like that, you can obviously have on the left if you like and add some text to the right hand side. Or if you wanted to, just maybe add a strap line in the middle as well. So that's three quick examples of using some sort of outdoor photography and using the safe zone in the middle to put the logo and making sure that the focal point of your image is in that band right in the center. Now, if you do not have access to this level of photography, or if you don't want to use Unsplash and you just want to use something plain, let's have a look at using some kind of texture with a logo, or just adding some kind of strap line that may be suited to your business. So navigate back over to Unsplash again, and you can find some interesting textures on Unsplash. So once you find the textures that you're happy with, bring those into Photoshop and resize those to fit inside the frame. And then you can start testing how your logo looks over the top. And that actually doesn't look too bad. 
but I'm not sure if it works really for the sort of adventure genre. So what we're gonna do is just add some different text over the top instead of a logo. So we're gonna add my name and uh, some kind of weekly schedule around what the um, what the channel is all about. So I've got weekly vlogs and tutorials. That tells the audience what the channel is all about. And now an extension of this, if we were to use a lighter background, we could choose um, to invert this background from being dark to light. So to do that, click on your background layer and Command I will invert the image. So we've got a nice light background now. We're gonna change the color of the text to black. Um, I like to use a sort of 96% black for my blacks. Kind of, it's not completely black, but it really is sort of a subtle gray, if you like. So 96 in there. So that kind of couldn't work from there. We can even take that a step further by adding a color cast like we did earlier over the top of that background image as well. So to do that, we'd select the background image layer, do a new layer over the top, and click on edit and fill. And we're just gonna do color. So if it says color already, click color and then click it again. And it'll bring up this uh, color palette. Now you could use your brand colors if you like, or you can just kind of uh, select a color. I know my sort of brand yellow from my logo, which is FFD 100. And that's gonna bring up my yellow from my logo. Click OK and click OK again. And I've got this big bright yellow. Now we can bring this down uh, in opacity like we did earlier by using the, the keys like 1 through uh, 10. So 1, 2, 3. So as you can see it's adding that now to those dust and scratch um, background. So it's not fully blocking it out as yellow but we're getting a little bit of that background through and a little bit of that texture through. I don't mind that. Um, I think it's too much so I'm going to go from around 30%. You can also use some of these layer uh, blending modes um, if you want to change the look and feel. So linear burns, okay. Um, but try and find what works for you. So I'm just going to add it to maybe multiply. So it's adding it to that white, um, but it's still got a little bit of that blue fleck going on in there. So you can manipulate your image as much or as little as you like. You can have it as dark or as light as you like depending on what your brand is, but I quite like that at sort of 20%, it's a nice subtle background. So there you have a couple of examples of how to design your cover art for YouTube using Photoshop. There's no completely right or wrong way to do this, apart from making sure that the information is in that central field. Here is another quick example that I've done for a client. If you wanna go check out this channel, I'll leave a card up above now. So here's a piece of artwork that I did for a client of mine. Her name is Amy Halgarth. It's Amy Halgarth Jewelry or AH Jewelry. But the premise of this piece of artwork is exactly the same as what we've been doing. We've got the essential information in this central box here. We've got a logo and a picture of Amy and including in the theme of her channel, which is all about jewelry. We've got pictures of jewelry across the top and down below. That's just about it from this video guys and remember if you want to have access to this photoshop file for free hit the first link in the description and it will get emailed straight to your inbox ready to use if you did get something out of this video remember to smash that like button it does show this video to more like-minded people if you want to support my channel hit subscribe turn on notifications i will look forward to seeing you guys in another video thanks for watching guys see you soon